Hey GearFax friends, today we're talking about the MiCare MK931 and the best part of this video I think is going to be tearing off the plastic from the display. Ah oh man, that is satisfying. Looks brand new. However, going off previous experiences with Meiki or Mieke keyboards, it's going to be terrible, I'm pretty sure of that. Let's start with the piano sound. It's a very boxy, cheap sort of sound. There are quite a few piano sounds to choose from though. That's meant to be a honky tonk piano apparently. No. Some of these sounds are apparently not even acquainted with the titles. I mean, that's nothing like a vibraphone at all. Ah, now we have something that sounds like what it's meant to. Oh, it sounds strangely out of tune. Oh, maybe that was my bad playing. Percussive organ. Again, you know, that doesn't even sound anything like an organ. Let's really test it. This is rock organ. It's a really nice sound, but it is nothing like a rock organ at all. Electric bass. feeble is that sound and even that's testing the speakers out there vibrating quite a bit you can hear the speakers popping there and it's just it's just a really lame sound what's the next one like okay this is called fingered bass but it's clearly based on a slap bass terrible jazz bass just sounds like a kind of a soft sine wave this is an interesting one. This is called pick bass. But I can hear that being sampled and put to pretty good use. Of course, it'd have to be recorded directly to avoid that nasty speaker rattle, but that's pretty cool. Got to give credit where credit's due. But seriously, have a listen to synth bass. This will make you laugh. Tragic. This one is strings. Does this sound familiar? So really scrolling through these voice names makes me think I'm just going to get a random sound. It doesn't really matter what I choose. I'll give it one more go. Let's find an interesting one. Synth 2. Are no, you kidding me? So we're back on organ again. So that's the lineup of sounds, but you might as well ignore these titles. All right, let's talk about beats. Here's our intro. It sounds like the soundtrack from some 1920s Tarzan movie. Let's try a 16 beat at 130 beats per minute. Pressed ending, but I don't think it's going to end. A big but ultimately ridiculous ending for the 16 beat. We'll try one more, and I'm really going out on a limb here because I'm going to try DIS beat, which I can only assume is distortion beat. Get ready.
The sound quality of these speakers really is outstandingly bad. The display does try to do something interesting though. I'll just play this rhythm with the volume right down and you'll see the mixer kicking in there and the accompaniment. You can hear the sound there. That's with the volume actually on zero. To be fair though, this does have some good features regarding the sound that you choose. So let's say we're on a pretty standard sound like this. You can add vibrato. Quite subtle, but there it is. And you can also add sustain. I'll turn them off. And you've also got one touch, touch response. So. So even a soft touch will give me full volume there. And we should have actually, and again, to be fair, I have to say the touch response is very accurate. We got some percussion buttons here. Not very responsive and not velocity sensitive either. So this is, no, that's snare drum. That's, I don't know what that is. Okay, this thing that looks like an ethnic timpani of some kind is the bass drum. And the thing that looks like a tom-tom is clearly a bongo. And this one, okay, that is clearly a hi-hat diagram, but it sounds like a cymbal. And that's the hi-hat, the one that looks like a cymbal. Well, that's logical, it's all in opposites. So we should have, Now it's pretty hard to know where you're at. Ah, I just can't do that. It has MIDI connection. It boasts stereo, although I've never heard any of the sounds on this panning from side to side, so I don't know how they make that claim. Touch response we've discussed. It can record a multi-track sequence. I guess you've got to respect that. And it's got EOS. I don't know what that is. And it's got touch sensitive. And if you're getting deja vu, we talked about touch response just a moment ago. And what have we got here? 45 song library, awesome! And touch response again. Looking at the back now, there's the coveted Makey logo. I think that's how it's pronounced. And over here, it does live up to its MIDI promise. And it's also got left and right out with RCA sockets there. You can put in headphones and there's a socket for our power and a bit of sticky tape to fix it. Surprisingly, we've got pitch bend down here, and I have to admit this is easily the best feature, and I'd even go as far as to say this is excellent by any keyboard standards. It's unbelievably smooth. <laughs> Extremely refined and sensitive with no digital jumping whatsoever. Sounds almost analog. So why they'd have something so precise and accurate on such a crummy keyboard is a mystery to me. But I guess the biggest mystery is why would you even manufacture something like this? I think the only answer that we can come up with is that it's to cater for an ignorant market. And I don't mean to disrespect anybody who may have accidentally bought one of these, but the display looks impressive. It's nice to have a pitch bend wheel and it's got heaps of buttons. But at the end of the day, the sound delivery is just grotesque. It's terrible. Zero out of 10 from me at Gearfacts. I strongly recommend you don't buy Mieke's MK931 and have a great day. That's all from Gearfacts. You've been warned.